In 2006, the solar system which we knew growing up changed. All of a sudden, there was one less planet, and some people felt very strongly about Pluto's demotion. Personally, I prefer to think of it not as having lost a planet, but as having gained a new class of solar system object, the dwarf planet. At the time of making this video, there were five solar system objects classified as dwarf planets, including Pluto. While Pluto has a place in the popular consciousness, the other four do not. Here then is a brief overview of the dwarf planets. Pluto was not the first dwarf planet to be discovered, nor was it the first object to lose its status as a planet. Those distinctions go to Ceres. In 1766, Johann Titius discovered a formula for the distance of planets from the Sun. This worked for all the planets known at the time, but curiously predicted a planet between Mars and Jupiter. The 1st of January 1801 saw the discovery of Ceres at the predicted distance from the Sun by Giovanni Piazzi. At less than a thousand kilometres in diameter, it was surprisingly small. Shortly afterwards, new objects were discovered in the same band. While for a time a number of these objects were designated as planets, it eventually became clear that this band consisted of a vast number of objects varying in size, and that Ceres was merely the largest of these. So Ceres became an asteroid, a term that was coined because through a telescope these objects looked like stars rather than planets. There are two other things I'd like to add about Ceres before moving on to Pluto. Firstly, Ceres can reach a magnitude of 6.7 in opposition. This means that in good viewing conditions it can be seen with a pair of binoculars. Secondly, I grew up thinking of the asteroid belt as a dense band of rocks, a bit like you see in Star Wars. It is, however, extremely sparse, and a good way of thinking of it is more like an isolated highway with a long distance between each traveller. American astronomer Percival Lowell began his search for what he called Planet X in 1905. He believed that irregularities in the orbit of Uranus, or Uranus depending on which pronunciation you prefer, indicated a ninth planet. Lowell died in 1916, but the Lowell Observatory resumed his search in 1929. Amateur astronomer Clive Tombaugh was hired to make a systematic search of the ecliptic and discovered Pluto within a year. Pluto was named after the Roman god of the underworld, partly chosen because the first two letters are the initials of Percival Lowell. Ironically, Pluto proved Lowell's calculations to be incorrect, as it was far smaller than predicted. The error is probably a result of an inaccurate mass for Neptune, although other objects in the Kuiper belt may have had an effect as well. For over 70 years, Pluto was classified as a planet. I personally think that the discovery of Charon in 1978 should have led to Pluto and Charon being declared a double planet, but there were bigger problems looming. Pluto had more company than its moons and the occasional comet. It was gradually becoming clear that Pluto was one of a number of smaller objects in the outer solar system, and that it had more in common with these than it did with the other planets. Astronomers openly acknowledged that Pluto had been misclassified. Tradition, however, plays an important role in human affairs, and something big would have to happen to force a change. <laughs> In 2005, a team led by Mike Brown announced the discovery of a body in the Kuiper Belt, which they had temporarily dubbed Xena. A number of similar objects had already been discovered, but what made Xena special was its size. With a diameter of 2,500 kilometres, it was larger than Pluto. Now there were two hard decisions to be made. Firstly, should the definition of planet still include Pluto? And secondly, how were they going to break the news to the nerds that the name Xena couldn't be kept? In the second case, the problem was solved by the inspired choice of the name Eris, the goddess who so discord between Aphrodite and Athena. Those who were still dismayed by the loss of the name Xena were partly placated by Eris's tiny moon being named Dysnomia, goddess of lawlessness. As for Pluto's planetary status, the new definition of planet was an object that orbited the sun, had reached hydrostatic equilibrium and had cleared its orbit of all objects of a similar size. Pluto did not fit this definition, but a new class of object was defined. Objects which orbited the Sun had reached hydrostatic equilibrium but had not cleared their orbit were now designated dwarf planets. 
Pluto, Ceres and Eris were the first three dwarf planets to be recognised as such. It is expected that around a dozen objects might be classified as dwarf planets, but the tricky part is determining whether that object has reached hydrostatic equilibrium. I've used that term a lot, I should explain it. At its most simplistic, a body has reached hydrostatic equilibrium if, in its liquid state, it conforms to an ellipsoid. If an object is irregular, it is usually the case that hydrostatic equilibrium has not been reached. The asteroid Vesta, however, may have reached hydrostatic equilibrium before solidifying, but owe its irregular shape to a massive impact thought to have occurred about a billion years ago. As a general rule of thumb, it is thought that rocky objects, such as Ceres, reach hydrostatic equilibrium at a diameter greater than 900 kilometres, and icy objects at around 400 kilometres. Discovered by Mike Brown's team in 2005 and announced in July of that year, Marke Marke became the fourth body to be acknowledged as a dwarf planet. It was also the only large Kuiper Belt object to have no known satellite. As it was discovered in May, around Easter, the body was given the holding name of Easter Bunny by Mike Brown's team. The name Marke Marke was eventually chosen from the mythos of the Rapa Nui people. As Marke Marke came from Easter Island and was a fertility god, there are two subtle connections to the original holding name here. The discovery of Haumea is marred by controversy. Two teams had independently taken pictures of Haumea, one Mike Brown's prolific team and the other led by José Luis Ortiz Moreno. Ortiz was the first to make an announcement, but it was later revealed that he had accessed the logs of Brown's team. Brown was understandably unhappy, but Ortiz claimed he was just making sure that Haumea was not another object already announced by Brown's team. In the end, it was Brown's team that got naming rights, and they chose the matron goddess of Hawaii. And its two moons, Hiyaku and Namaka, were named after two of the goddess's daughters. The most notable feature of Haumea is its elongated shape. Although this has not been directly observed, it can be inferred by fluctuations in apparent magnitude. It also rotates very quickly, once every four hours, which is thought to be the result of a major collision sometime in its past. These five dwarf planets are part of a known solar system that has been getting progressively more detailed since the time of Galileo. Some people may feel sad that Pluto has left his place amongst the planets, but if we follow him to his new abode we can appreciate a richer view of the solar system, of which only a glimpse was afforded in this video.